Hello, this is Nathan Crutchfield. Uh, welcome to my job hazard analysis. Today I'd like to talk with you a little bit about the use of the cause and effect diagram. The job hazard analysis process begins with a review of the current and existing standard operating procedures and descriptions of the job. This is followed by observations of the employees that may be performing the job and discussions with employees about their concerns and issues while performing the job. We use the cause and effect diagram to pull this information together and break the job down into the various steps and tasks. Once we've got the job defined, we can then begin the process of identifying the hazards that exist within each step of the job and the various subtasks that might be having to be completed. From this analysis we can develop preventive measures. We can then go back and identify any at-risk events that may be occurring. At that point we redevelop the standard operating procedures and the process will continue until as much of the risk and hazards of the task are removed. The cause and effect diagram or Ishikawa diagram is also known as the fishbone. It is a deceptively simple yet powerful tool that can be used in developing the job hazard analysis. It provides us with a graphic presentation of all the causes required to create an effect. It does look like a fishbone, hence its name. It can be used with the JHA to bring together all the elements or causes of a job, the job being the effect. To develop a cause and effect diagram, we would first begin with defining the task or step to be taken under review. This becomes essentially the head of the fish. We draw the backbone of the fish and then we begin by the analysis of the task or steps within the job. We like to use the following sequence. The first rib of the fishbone will be the task and steps. In sequence, you would define each step or task in order that is required to do the job. Next, we will develop a rib that consists of all the tools, equipment, and materials required to complete this task or step. Third, we develop a rib that will just pull together all the elements of the environment within which the task or steps of the job are to be undertaken. Next, we would look at all the policies and procedures that are currently in effect that define this task or the ensuing steps so that we know all that is currently being developed administratively to guide this particular job. Last but not least, we look at all the personnel that might be involved in this task or in some manner affect the task. These five areas of steps, tools, equipment, materials, environment, policies, procedures, protocols, and personnel exposed to the job or doing the job, we feel the five major components to be used for developing the fishbone. Many thanks for listening. Uh, the materials just discussed have come from Job Hazard Analysis, a guide for voluntary compliance and beyond, written by James Routon and Nathan Crutchfield, published by Butterworth Heinemann in 2008. For additional insights on Job Hazard Analysis, uh, join us at myjobhazardanalysis.com. Thanks again.